Ooh, what's up guys and welcome to the team planner and of course the battle itself versus Basika. Um, going about it, this is absolutely a very tough team. Should probably say his team name also, also just so I don't screw that up. Myrtle Beach Malatex. And I might actually screw that up. I, I should. I'm terrible at English. Far too often. So anyway, just to cover it really here. Um, there were a few things I was starting to consider with his team. Uh, looking about it, his team is on the right side here. We got Latios, Zapdos, Mimikyu, Volcarona, uh, Doug Trio with Arena Trap, and Polion, Sneasel, Zarina, Garbodor, Regular Rotom, and probably the toughest mon on the field, which is the Mega Law Pony. Um, straight at it, really, really good, well designed defensive core here with Latias, Zapdos, Volcarona, and Polion. I think that core is naturally really 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 strong and then we have Serena and Garbodor which is fairly viable overall as, a, as their own so the only merit I guess one should have is that only he doesn't have too many offensive threats while Lopan is one of the best offensive threats it is very alone there on the field Mimikyu while being a set of sweeper is just that it's set of sweeper at best and Doug Trio is not an effective Pokemon versus my team as a whole depending on what I bring as you guys see on the screen already, um, that's the team I'm bringing, those six actually. So I'm feeling quite confident here overall. Um, the team I decided to bring, uh, just on the, on the left side of course, there is my team. And I forgot for some reason to add Mega Aerodactyl. Um, don't call me out on it, it's on the team at least. And uh, our Mega Aerodactyl is designed to outspeed the Law Pony. Uh, it's a jolly set unfortunately, couldn't go at him and tier to outspeed it. Uh, we have Air Lace, we have Stone Edge, Earthquake, and Roost. And we actually aren't max attack here, but we are 212, I believe. And um, the rest is put on defense to be able to uh, Roost against Garbodor, which is a setup, uh, or, or setup spiker. To win that matchup and potentially actually Roost on it is going to be crucial. Uh, but that's just an idea I have. Um, I was considering a more aggressive set, but I think this is going to work just about right. It means that Latias can be very effective versus us. Because we do lack the crunch after all, which is going to be unfortunate. But besides that, Mega Arrow is a very strong Pokemon versus this team. With really no fair switching, I would say potentially that Sneasel can revenge kill us. But that's really the only Pokemon I'm fearing in theory. Uh, the second one is Glyzopod, and this is an Assault Vest variant, able to take uh, easily and Thunderbolt from Zapdos and retaliate with a Rock Slide or a Liquidation. Uh, I was considering Bandit variant here, didn't bring it, um, because first impression kills what it needs to. Uh, I fully, it is max attack, of course, and max special defense. Uh, first impression, Oko's Latias, it Oko's Sneasel, it Oko's Serena, uh, it's a beast. And a half. Um, and then we have Aqua Jet together with them. Um, um, let's see Aqua Jet, First Impression, um, Liquidation, and Rock Slide. Yeah, that works. Um, also, it's a fine switching versus Volcarona. While Volcarona can set up Quiver Dances, it shouldn't necessarily force me out, which is great. Uh, Sword Arc, standard Focus Blast variant, I'm gonna say, but you know, it's. Um, it's a hidden power rock variant with uh, focus blast and dark pulse together with U-turn, and it's a scarf variant able to outspeed. Uh, well, uh, plus one Volcarona. This Pokemon isn't necessarily important for the team, but it's the one that made it over Inferno, which was heavily considered. Uh, next one is a special defensive, very slow Steelix, um, able to deal with Zapdos head-on even if it has Heatwave, has Gyarball, Earthquake, and uh, Toxic together with the likes of Stealth Rocks. Sure work, watch out for Heatwave basically. Tabu Coco, um, this variant is a creep to outspeed the trio. We have a Shuka Berry in case that Pokemon is for some reason Scarfed. Then we have Thunderbolt, Tin Power Ice, and Dazzling Gleam together with Roost. And our last Pokemon is gonna be our probably main attacker here, which is Mammoth Swine. It always seems to make it here, it's just that good. Uh, the neutral coverage it has is really good versus this team. Earthquake and Isle Crash will solve a lot. Then we have Ice Shard. And um, let's see, the last move was, I do believe, Super Power. But it's not required here. No, it was Knockout for Latios, my bad. Uh, but basically, it, it is it is a demon for this matchup. It does so well versus everything. 
Uh, gotta watch out for potentially, like I said here, um, Law Upon It, which is, is the main threat. I don't have a natural switch in for it. Um, I didn't design this team to defensively check it either. The uh, reason for it is because I played that game before where I decided to take a more defensive route versus make a Law Upon It to be able to switch in versus it. You gain nothing by that, you just prolong the inevitable, but having um, a team here where they, you force switches probably should pressure uh, the Law Upon It better or at least the team as a whole, I hope. This is the first time I'm trying that out. Let's see if that works. So, with all that said, let's go into the match itself. So, from the team preview here, I... Like, this is a very good team, no matter what he route he took. I was really surprised not to see Sneasel. I think that was a problem that made sense versus me, no matter what, because of low kick. Um, but we see Law Pony, we see Zapdos. Latias, Volcarona, Dugtree, and Garbodor. I can only assume Garbodor is going to be a solve for this matchup. It just makes so much sense. It's annoying. Real annoying. Volcarona, absolutely a sweeping set. No no reason not to be. <sighs> Sorry about that. And then we have Dugtree, which of course is trapping. So I assume that's a stealth rocker because nothing else can set up rocks. And then it's whether or not which one of the Septos and Latias is going to be the potential defogger. A lot of money expect to outspeed uh, Coco. Um, that's basically it. Like, I'm really glad I have some defensive investment versus Coco because, or with Coco, because it's possibly the only Pokemon that can take reliably a high jump kick, return, I mean, and actually deal with the Law Pony head on. Uh, but yeah, I'm relying heavily on Glide support for Emerge Exit. At least he can't OCO it, but it's absolutely a Pokemon that I believe uh, where a natural switching is going to be crucial. Um, so yeah, with really all of this in mind, let's go into the battle itself. So from the get-go here, I'm going to lead off with Goliathopod, as my opponent of course lead with Law Pony. And as stated before, I am Scarfed, no, not with that, this Pokemon, right? You think, you think that I am the, the mighty monstrous Goliathopod? Psych! He's going to go for Fake Out, revealing my master plan, of course! Of course, I am the Sorark, the Scar Sorark, the one that's gonna release the Focus Blast and oh, call up on turn one. No, no, of course not. That's not gonna happen. We missed that, and Endra falls, and I'm okay. Okay, one go. Okay, we still we, we still have Mega Aerodactyl. I'm actually gonna go for a Stone Edge here. I'm feeling uh, defensive Zapdos would make so much sense here uh, because of Static and of course Rocket Helmet like that. But he brings the and. Mm, I mean, without crunch, I'm not that threatening, clearly. And Stone Edge will connect, we do score a crit, which it absolutely does a massive amount of damage, but I can't win the matchup. There is simply not possible for me to do that. So I'm gonna bring Grimlock to Steelix, and uh, I'm gonna make him roost in front of me. Uh, now I suspected that he could have potential Ice Beam or anything like that, but I'm just gonna go for my safe rocks as it's the only way of Willow down Volcarona. I was very happy to not see Volcarona come in on this. Uh, Doug Priyu is not a potential threat here, and Jarball should potentially Oko it. As my opponent himself go for um, Stealth Rocks, which I've, uh, I'll be honest, I thought it was surprising. Though I have two Pokemon weak to rocks, it makes sense. Uh, here I was actually trying to switch out uh, just to kind of. See that, or I didn't screw up. I, I have to take this earthquake. At least I would take Doug Trio with me, and I have rocks on the field. And as long as this spell goes, um, I rather get Volcarona low uh, in theory. So I'm not gonna go for any way of defogging. Uh, I realized that I said Koku has a defog, not Roost. She definitely enforces that. Um, so he goes for a fake out here. The reason here, I've said this before, I'm not gonna switch out versus Law Pony for my money. Um, the right way of me of playing Law Upon It is forcing it out, so I'm staying in with Steelix, and yeah, mm, it is where it is, like, High Jump Kick is just not gonna cut it, had a Drain Punch, I would have taken that easily, uh, but at least I can force him out now, since I have full HP, I have uh, Revrong Eevee in my HP, it's definitely bothering me as I'm recording this, but um, yeah, I'm just directly gonna go for the Thunderbolt, it's my best bet, as uh, he, he goes to guard border, feeling possibly that I was gonna go for a Dazzling Gleam, but I have no reason to, and um, we don't do much damage at all. This is a special defensive guard border, and my god, you take it like a champ. So I'm gonna send in the ex-wife as he goes for spikes, and uh, I'm gonna go and attack right in front of me. The thing is here, Icicle Crash will not do enough. Uh, I need to get Earthquake, plus 
I don't want to get something like the aftermath stuff like that afterwards. I really don't with knockoff and whatnot. So I got rid of Earthquake. I'm very happy and pleased to see that he stayed in. And now it brings on Zapdos. And since I'm thick fat, it means Heatwave is not a threat. Plus I'm a Salt Vest. I do not care about Heatwave here. I'm gonna go directly for an Icicle Crash. He was feeling that I was gonna switch out, went for U-turn. And now he's pretty much forced to sack something, and he's gonna sack Volcarona. And this is the marvelous thing with Mammoth Swine. If you predict wrong, you are about to take a lot of damage. 130 base attack means you gonna die, son. And the ex-wife is just providing that, as we're gonna knock out Volcarona effortlessly. Who knew such a threat was so easily dealt with? I clearly didn't. Um, so Mammoth comes in again, I was like, fuck. It, it's not gonna work. <laughs> I clearly can't stack Mammoth Swine, at least not yet. So I'm gonna bring in Garrus, my Goliath support. I just really want to have the um, Air Emergency Exit to kick in. And luckily for me, it goes with Fake Out, not Return. Uh, as, you know, I'll switch out. I'm going to Volkan, the Aerodactyl. And uh, I said in my video here I wasn't max attack. Uh, it actually comes to bite me in the ass here because, wow, that's unfortunate. As luckily for me, he misses his high jump kick and Arrow survives with a slither of hope as Zapdos comes in and we are now going to confirm that this Zapdos, of course the Scarfed, should have probably not seen it coming as uh, Arrow is gone, that, that's about it. The thing is here now, however, Mammoth Swan is on his Smurgles board here. There is nothing stopping the ex-wife. She is fat and she is hungry, so she is going to eat a Zapdos. But the Zapdos is fleeing to the one. But what is the one to the Zapdos? It is nothing. We're gonna go for an Icicle Crash. The one, the Neo, you know, the, the man itself is not a threat to the ex-wife. It's just, it's not happening. So we're gonna kick the one down. We're gonna ask for, I can't, for Mr. Smith. Where is he? We don't get him. We get Zapdos instead already. It's not a threat, I don't feel the pressure. The ex-wife is hungry and feasting on Basika's corpse. And we win this game, Frio. I, I guess that ex-wife rat was kinda low, wasn't it? Anyway, we win, clearly. Very lucky here, actually, to be honest. So so looking back at the game, I'm really just gonna say this as it is. Uh, Basika did probably just one really big misplay, and that is the decisive point for the whole game. And that is staying in with Law of Pony versus Mega Aerodactyl. While it did survive it, I definitely don't believe it was worth the risk. Um, looking at the back, yeah, he probably switched into his Latias. That would be the easy switch in. I would have been forced to keep Aerodactyl healthy throughout this matchup. So I can only assume that I would switch into my Goliath about sacking at that point. And that would have been basically coming into uh, Tapu Koku. Tapu Koku would win the matchup versus Latias, most certainly. It also probably would win versus Zapdos, in theory. But basically, it become a sack game for him where which Pokemon do a sack to get damage on the Law Pony? Uh, Mammoth Swine was certainly way more effective than it should have been. And um, I just think that's the thing. Like, if you treat Mammoth Swine like a wall breaker more than a potential revenge sweet or revenge killer, it's gonna do most of the time really well. Uh, it's a very hard Pokemon to switch into because if it comes in freely and get one of those free hits, those 130 base attack is gonna do stuff. Uh, it's just a very hard thing to deal with, and I think Mammoth Swine really showcased that here. Um, so the Basika, I really want to say GG. Um, like I said, that was probably your only mistake. Besides that, I think you got it pretty good. Like there was really no easy way for me of dealing with Mega Law Pony, and I mean the game clearly speaks for it. They're just it was just not enough power here whatsoever. And uh, yeah, I was absolutely impressed throughout this matchup. I absolutely was. So if you're watching, thank you for of course doing so. And uh, yeah, hope to post something more this week. We'll see what happens. But I hope you enjoyed this game, if anything. So with that said, thank you for watching and take care. Bye.